Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to do a weekly forecast video and I'll probably touch on last week as well, just so you guys know. Uh, I'm not doing live streaming. I'm taking my winter break, so I'll be I won't be trading from till the end of December and until mid January. So probably the third the end of the second week, start of the third week in January is when I'll start live streaming again. But I'll continue to do the weekly forecasts. Um, I'll do it for this week. And this week is the big week. This is the week that we've really been waiting for um, on the calendar. And why? Because next week, or this week, we have CPI, Fed fund rate, FOMC press conference, big red folder week. Um, so, you know, this right here explains a lot of why we've been in this consolidation period. Um, it's been two months since the Fed has released the funds rate. So the market has really been hanging on this one. Um, if you kind of, if you do follow kind of fundamentals a little bit, um, Wall Street has been guessing that the Fed is gonna cut rates this month. So, it's 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 been like a real hold your breath moment. I personally don't think they're gonna cut, but this just kind of the the state of uh, the fundamental environment really kind of goes and shows why we've been in this consolidation for like the last two weeks. Um, so I think after this, so it, it kind of makes sense, you know, this is at the end of the year. Um, I think after the, I was going to say after this, I think we'll start to move a little more freely and we'll finally break out of this consolidation. But at the same time, remember we have this, we have the holiday period and I've described in a few videos, but prior I'll do it again right now. Um, holiday period, you, we can just go under the assumption that there's going to be less volatility, less liquidity in the market because the people who move the market, the font, big funds are going to be, you know, taking holidays just like a lot of, you know, corporate America does the last two weeks of December um, really tones down. So Wall Street does that too. And then, you know, it takes about two weeks into January for them to really get picked up again. Um, so, you know, if we're talking in terms of ICT and smart money concepts, we can just kind of say, you know, if the algorithm, the central bank algorithm is moving price around to stop out and run liquidity on these big hedge funds, if they are taking their holiday break, there's going to be less volume and less need, less liquidity that needs to be matched for the algorithm. So, um, that's just my interpretation. I, I know ICT and it's very common for traders to take off this holiday period. So I suggest that you guys do the same. This fourth quarter, this last two weeks has been very rough for a lot of traders. I think if if somebody isn't showing you their receipts and they're also saying that it's not been hard, don't believe them. Um, only believe the people that are really showing you the receipts. And I feel like a lot of, you know, there, I've, I've seen a lot of people describing how these past um, few weeks have been brutal, but this is why. So exciting to see. I think we're gonna have a big range week next week, a lot of volatility. So let's get to it. Um, in terms of the short and sweet on the weekly direction, I don't know. I do not know what it's going to be. It is perfectly placed in an area where it could go either way. If you wanted me to if you wanted to put a gun to my head, what I think is going to happen is, I think, in terms of the indices, I think we're going to see a very large spike to the upside because there's a lot of buy side resting where we are. And then I think we're going to go down. Um, so in context of the dollar right here, I have the DXZ 2023 contract. So the dollar index contract. And right here, I have the 10-year treasury note contract so these two markets should move inversely and as you can see they are doing a decent job of that but the reason why i'm showing you this is when i bring this 10-year treasury note up when i feel like it's 
could go either way so it's just you know another piece of another piece of data and ICT um, teaches about using the 10-year treasury note and the core content month five I think it's video six but I like what we're doing on this treasury note because look at here we came up and we're getting up into this bearish order block you can see we're touching the bottom of it if you draw the mean threshold of this order block we didn't close these bodies above the mean threshold mean threshold 50 percent the white line and this where this ended right here is not only the consequent encroachment of this wick but it's just shy of the bottom of this down close so i think it picked very specific levels of course you know smart parroting icts description of the algorithm it picked very specific points to turn at i think what might happen is we might see a spike down into this weekly fair value gap into this order block um and right here what we're going to get is no sorry I'm on the dollar i think we'll see a spike down and then i think we're going to come up and close above this weekly as what i'm planning for this dollar contract will look a little different from what i've been showing in past videos because it's not the continuous contract so on the continuous contract there's sell side way way over here that we sweeped right here but i'm under the impression that the dollar is bullish and that this was a market structure shift and we are going to see higher prices i will go over to the continuous dollar contract in a moment but i believe that we are going to see higher prices on the dollar and until we break this swing low to the downside i'm gonna hold on to that if we break the swing low to the downside i'll reassess that and i think we're gonna go further downside but as long as the swing low is put in place i think we're going up as you can see the 10-year treasury note is showing similar so since these should be inverse if the dollar is going to go up 10-year treasury note is going to go down it picked a perfect place to turn around at right here this up close candle so yes that's what i think is happening 10-year treasury is going down dollar going up i'll go to the continuous dollar actually This is what I've been working. This is what I've been showing. So I believe we are going to go and revisit these highs. Going down to the daily. So you can see it's really both ways because we came up, closed above this daily for value gap, came down, closed below this daily for value gap, came up, wicked above this swing high. So that is enough to constitute you know, lower prices. Um, but again, I'm still bullish as long as we have this low in place and I want to see us get above this weekly fair value gap, digging up further into this weekly fair value gap will be very, very bearish for the indices. And I think if we were going back to the weekly, you can see we touched into it once. So if we do want to come and take this low, I think it'll happen soon. Um, you know, if the market really did retrace, if it's really going downside and wants to take out this low, then this was a significant retracement into a weekly discount array, discount array, see, to go lower. So we are, again, we're, um, what I'm trying to explain here is we're very, very much in, in between, and it's definitely because of this economic calendar. And if we are in between, that means it's low probability. So not only are we, um, I'm blanking on the word, not only are our technicals, technicals, are our technicals showing low probability, the fundamentals and, you know, the time of the year is low probability too. So again, it's a great time to just sit back, you know, study, back test tape read going down to the daily yeah as you can see 
closed above this daily, closed below the daily. If we go to the four hour, the four hour. So this was this four hour fair value gap I've been talking about. And you can see when we closed above this and then we had that retracement, we retraced and the bodies respected that four hour. And then we came up above it. So I'm still looking for bullish price. I think this can be a nice accumulation and it's kind of setting up. It is setting up to be look like a nice market maker buy model. So market maker buy model right there. We have our original accumulation original accumulation right here. We break out of it, come down, but then you have our first stage distribution, second stage smart money reversal at a pretty significant level. Again, this level is significant because it is significant level sell side on the weekly and it's an order block on the weekly. Smart money reversal. And then you can see we start to distribute or not distribute, but deliver the buy side. So we delivered the sell side of the market maker model here. And now I believe we're going to be delivering the buy side. As you can see, I think I'd probably, I'd probably label this the low risk buy. So again, th these market maker models can be up to the interpreter and it can be kind of determined on the time frame. Yeah, no, I think this is a four hour market maker buy model. Here's smart money reversal. I'm not seeing much for a um, low risk buy. I think up closer here, I think this is it right here, which would mean this right here is the first stage accumulation. And what I'm guessing will happen is with this big news, we're going to see um, basically some time a few candles that look like these candles right here and we'll probably deliver the second stage accumulation and we will come back and take this buy side liquidity. So yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty on point with our weekly forecast last week. Um, I'm pretty proud of that. And I think looking at this, I think what we are seeing right now is a market maker buy model on the dollar. So again, dollar, up indices down uh, yeah so dollar up indices down market maker buy model let's go over to the indices we'll start off on es so this was last week on es and i did that midweek recap kind of talking about the possibilities of how the week could end and i'm going to drop down to the one hour and I'm just going to show you what ended up happening. So these black lines delineate the days. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up an image right now. And this is what we got last week. Let me try and make sure you can see both of these. So what we got for last week was a consolidation Thursday reversal. Excuse me. So this right here is uh, this right here is Monday. You have Monday. I'll draw it out. Monday came down. Now you can either, if you want to argue, this is the low. That's the low. I'm just saying, over Monday, Tuesday, it put a low in on Monday, Tuesday. Again, I know on that infograph you're seeing right now the lows on Tuesday again it can be Monday Tuesday it's not a hard rule we come up Wednesday put that high in on Wednesday that is above see this wick right here this wick came up above that Monday high came down Thursday taking out these lows into the see this four hour fair value gap see this green area on the chart PD array and then on Thursday, we send it higher to the end of the week, Friday. So as you can see right there, it's very similar to 
the Thursday reversal. And this can be very hard. We are still in this consolidation, as you can see, we're consolidating. So it's really hard to pick a direction. And I, I just, you know, coming off of the dollar chart, we just reiterated why it's low probability technically and fundamentally with the time of the year. So again, it's, it is a hard time to be trading. This is this right here is a hard market structure to guess. Again, because like I said on Wednesday, uh, if you watch that midweek video on Wednesday, there's also a, another market structure that is, let me see if I can find it. Weekly Wednesday reversal. So I made that video on Wednesday, I believe, and I basically said it could be one of these two things, and it's really hard to figure that out. Um, again, the only difference between these is this last leg just goes straight down like that. So to identify whether it was the Thursday reversal or the Wednesday, you really just have to, like you would have had to have known that this four hour fair value gap was right here and you know you can you can see us respecting it throughout this consolidation um, so again it was you would have had to it was up in the air it was really up in the air you would have had to identify that we were finding support here didn't break below this low and gone higher now I believe if you look on NASDAQ NASDAQ there this was an SMT for NASDAQ See if I can pull up NASDAQ for you. So as you can see right here, the low, this Thursday low wasn't below this low. So right here you had an SMT last week with ES. NASDAQ didn't put that lower low in. So the SMT with NASDAQ making that higher low for forecasted the reversal on Thursday. But okay, we'll go now talking future projections. So this upcoming week. So here we for ES we have the show it here um, we have the quarterly shifts right here remember that so we are currently in the middle of a quarterly shift and we reached this target 40 day high now Nasdaq came down into this weekly fair value gap ES didn't and I think that also just shows a little bit how it kind of tips its hand to the fact that we're gonna go down because what was really happening is we're up here just to knock out this buy side. I can kind of see it on the daily a little better. Um, what ES did, so ES respected this daily order block right here. But again, I think we're coming above just for these highs in the 40 days. Remember, when we're doing the quarterly shift, we don't have to take out all the highs in the last six days. We don't have to do it. Um, so we've come pretty far. Our quarterly shift, this could be our quarterly shift high. That'd be completely valid. You can have this quarterly shift high, and then we come back down and end the next 20 days somewhere around here. We could have the next 20 days come down, kind of rebound up. Um, it doesn't have to take this high. But as you can see, this is a very significant turnaround point. We have this daily fair value gap right here. We took the buy side here. We've been in consolidation. We, I think it would make sense that we, this consolidation, what happens is we came up, took the liquidity, and now we're gonna go lower. And again, that would also line up well with the theory of the dollar going up. I'm wondering if next week what we'll see is we'll see some up close candles to kind of just knock out any longs that are left before going down but again uh, i'm not too hooked on this idea just because 
remember we're, we're still in this consolidation we're still in a rough area um, in terms of the calendar holiday calendar just in the holiday time so I think it would be best if you just kind of sit on the sidelines and wait I think you there's been some reports coming out that Wall Street thinks we are going to see all-time highs into the end of the year and just remember in these concepts it it the whole idea of this algorithm is to work and run against these large hedge funds so if they are positioning themselves long it would make sense that the algorithm would then pull it against them down if you look at nasdaq so nasdaq last week was able to drop down into this daily and weekly fair value gap notice how it, it didn't close as high as es did this is the all-time high for nasdaq so i believe yeah so you can see even on these two candles right here we did take this high over here so we took it once we took it twice uh, i could see us taking it a third time off a news release and then ripping lower so you'd have that three drives pattern one two three lower on a news release i think if we if we take this low if we start getting close to this low we're gonna go a lot lower we'll probably see this weekly fair value gap look on the weekly we've had a very aggressive run up on the weekly and remember ICT I said this in last week's weekly forecast um, and I'll say it again in this week's weekly forecast ICT has said in videos that when the algorithm reprices this quickly it's doing it to get to a certain institutional level just so it can reprice deliver um that side of the market at that level before going lower so i i do think it's a little bit of a red flag that we've repriced on the weekly this quickly um yes so for next week again it's i think it's going to be a large range week um i'll be expecting possibly a wick up and then a sharp decline but remember, it could go either way. We're still in this consolidation. We're in the holiday period. I think it could really go either way. Um, I think the market maker buy model on the dollar, again, this market maker buy model with here being the original accumulation, um, first stage distribution, second stage, smart money reversal, um, early accumulation. I think with this market maker buy model, I think it's, it's signaling a market maker buy model which if it did go up back to this original accumulation that would mean the indices are going down yep so that is kind of my longer drawn out idea for next week um, i think it's going to be downward prices but again I, I could be wrong on that it could go both ways if the fed decides to cut rates next week which wall street is pricing that in as very likely if they cut rates next week we're going to rock it to the upside. Um, CPI, we, we don't really know what can happen. We could get a random hot CPI print. We could get a really, really um, disinflationary CPI print, which could make the Fed cut. Um, it, could, it could really go either way. And as you can see on this four hour, we're still in this brutal sideways price action. So we really have to wait till we leave that. You can see it on the daily too. Um, yeah, that's what it is. This is this is a rough time to be trading. Again, we were doing really well all of October. October was a good month for me. And as you can see why, um, we had direction. When you don't have direction, it is very hard to trade. So I'll be watching this daily for value gap. If we 
say CPI, say on like a news driver day, we come up and just happen to place a wick at a significant level, whether you know you want to divide this into quarters or it comes up to consequent encroachment and then just wicks to there, I will be anticipating down more down close days as long as we don't get if we get like a very very strong up close candle in the upper 50 percent of this daily fair value gap i will hold off on the idea of downside um as but yeah so that's what it is if we get a, a strong candle that closes above the top 50 percent of this daily fair value gap I will hold off on my idea of downside. If we respect the consequent encroachment, I will be looking for downside. But again, it's really, it could really go e either way. Let me. Well, okay, we'll go to ES and pull them up side by side, see if anything pops off the chart there. So as you can see, we, are, we do have an SMT right here, similar to the SMT we had on ES to the downside. So NASDAQ, remember we were looking at last week's price action, we have this SMT here that kind of tipped its hand. So NASDAQ closed a higher low. ES closed a lower low, but ES still kept that structure that I just showed you, the consolidation Thursday reversal. So we had the foreshadowing with NASDAQ not being able to close that lower low. I think we could be seeing a similar thing on the opposite direction for the daily. We have ES making this higher high, that's an SMT with NASDAQ. So that would also line up nice for the downside narrative. The These lows on ES look very smooth. Um, they're not perfect, but it's it's it looks like support. And I think we're gonna run these lows. NASDAQ, as you can see, came down to that daily a little nicer, but it also got higher and closer to its all-time high it took this significant level of liquidity i think it's ready to turn over and go to the downside um, could be wrong again really depends we have a lot of high impact news remember we were just remember this economic calendar i think it would be a good week to not po possibly not trade if you know you have been struggling in this consolidation It'd be a great week if you have been struggling in this consolidation to kind of tape read and you know look at look through you know these this um, info given in the core content and kind of try and use it. Pay attention. Call out higher time frame PD arrays. You know I'm, I'm talking one hour, four hour, um, and watch to see what gets respected.